What the frickin' frick? What the frickin' frack? I frickin' frackin' I frickin' frackin' told you, mother frinkers, so. I told you. Okay? You frickin' fricks! You fraggity, you cradging crunks! There is a plague upon our planet, and that plague is called moral puritanism. That plague is called fundamentalist Christianity. And more. It's not just Christianity. It's not just Christians. It's not just, uh, just prudes. It is a undercurrent of far-right conservatism that has managed to cheat its way into positions of political power in our uh, country. It's not the will of the people. Certainly not the will of the people. Uh, people love porn. People love sex. Uh, people love that shit. Um, but it is the will of a certain group of people uh, who think that they have the right to push on you what you should do to decide who is and who isn't in their mind a moral degenerate and force that on the rest of society. Oh, yeah, go ahead. And this has been happening for quite a while. Um, did you know that, like, there are a ton of people who make, and we're going to start, we're going to start, we're going to start spicy today. Because I don't fucking give a shit anymore, okay? Did you know there are a lot of people on the internet who make niche kink weird stuff? Sometimes it's BDSM, you know, where you hit somebody with something and it's a little violent. Some people make, uh, cuck porn. Some people make, uh, furry stuff. Some people make, um, like, uh, adult baby things, okay? People make some fucked up weird kink stuff that harms nobody on the internet. But do you know what happens? BDSM... Uh, that is uh, bondage, dominance, um, sadism, and masochism. That's what BDSM stands for. Okay? And uh, the thing is, Vor? Yeah, I can. Dominant, submissive, and masochism. But usually it's that. But regardless. Or slave and master, yeah. But listen, what I want you to understand about this is that these things have already, these fringe kinks have already been getting purged off of the internet for a very long time. It forces people into seedier and seedier segments of the internet. And interestingly, these people who don't, who aren't doing any harm, who are good people, often get put squished into places with genuinely horrifying people for example imagine let me just let me just give you an example of this okay imagine if you did a niche type of bdsm that was pretty violent but totally consensual okay totally consensual your kink you do it yourself okay and you get banned from every single website except one 8chan. What do you have to share your space with now? Now that you're on 8chan. Do you know Do you know who goes on 8chan? Do you know what gets set, spread all over 8chan? Do you know what you're going to become associated with? If the only place that you can share the thing that you like that doesn't harm anybody is with literal child predators who do hurt people. Isn't that fucked? Well, that's been happening for a long time. There are an increasingly large amount of websites from Patreon to uh, Fur Affinity to now OnlyFans. Well, OnlyFans already did this. That do not allow certain types of content on their platform. BDSM stuff has already been banned from OnlyFans for some time. Not because it's bad or harmful. Not because, um, you know, any of those things. But because could be interpreted it look it could look bad it looks it's it's a bit degenerate that's their reasoning it's bad for advertisers it's bad for business you see but 
I want you to notice something else. Do you know what else is bad for business? Oh, wait a second. We already talked about this. We talked about this with Kink at Pride, didn't we? Didn't we talk about this already at the beginning of the fucking summer? We already talked about all this, didn't we? Isn't it weird how first they decide that, oh, the kinksters, they're the weird ones. We got to get rid of them. They're bad for business. They look bad. It's bad optics. Then it's the, the oh, then you end up with a situation like um, anatomics, where anatomics is doing exactly what every single other hot tub streamer that is that is allowed on Twitch to do, except she's trans. And so she gets banned for sexually explicit content, even though it is the exact same thing that cis hot tub streamers are doing all the time. Huh. Weird how that works, huh? Weird how that happens literally all the time. Funny that. Funny. And then all of a sudden, it's, well, you know, listen, can you just not do the weird stuff? Can you just not do the fucking weird shit? And now we're seeing that it's going to a next level. In the last few years here in America, we've seen a absolute, you're fine, Clay Soldier. It's all good. I got you. You're good. I was just joking around with you. It's all good. Okay. Over the last couple of years, there's been an increase in legislation that uh, that purports to protect children, that purports to prevent sex trafficking, and doesn't do that. I know, shocker. They say it does something, and it doesn't actually do that. What it does do is make it harder and harder and further stigmatizes sex work. It associates se all sex work with, tra with trafficking, even though sex workers have already built all kinds of systems to protect one another from sex trafficking. From the governmental level, these corporate-backed impositions come in and make it harder for these people to work. And guess what? It gets even more sinister because even off outside of a legislative example, you've got a couple little fuckers like Visa, PayPal, CC bill and a couple of other payment processors the payment processors see the payment processors They don't want to be associated with anything that's bad for their brand They don't want to support anything that's bad for their brand And it just so happens that in a country where a lot of people are conservative and fundamentalist Christians That a lot of people are going to consider your brand bad if you are used if your brand is used to p process the payments for gay porn which those people think is evil and of the devil yeah remember remember guys just just for a second real quick i just want you to know being trans and having sex with anyone is on many sites considered kink it's considered deviant just being trans and having sex with anybody is considered a niche fetish porn Hmm, it wasn't very long since gay porn was considered that. So I, I, I have to ask, what happens when extreme or when uh, explicit sexual content gets banned and your body is considered explicit by nature? You, you starting to put it two and two together? You starting to put two and two together what's happening here? It's convenient. Nobody has a pro oh, nobody has a problem. Listen, we don't want the we don't want the bad stuff out there. We don't want the bad stuff out there. It's just, you know, we categorized your body as inherently bad. And by the way, that uh that 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 is a a common thing, just so that you're aware. That is a fucking common thing. For trans people to be considered a, a fetish. For gay people to be considered... Well, I mean, we all know. What do you... Th we've heard conservatives talking about it. Conservatives don't think that gay marriage should be allowed because it's it's deviant. This is the problem with always targeting deviants regardless of harm. Okay? And the problem with having systems that are built like this, with having a, a culture that treats sex this way, is that eventually 
it hurts everyone. At first, it only hurts those who were. It only hurts the degenerate weirdos. It only hurts the, 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 uh, the F slurs and the T slurs. Because I, funny, I can't even say that, <laughs> even though I am one. Can't say that on Twitch, but it starts to hurt those people. And and you know you can forget because they're just a small percentage of the population. But now you have something like OnlyFans, where now on OnlyFans. All sexually explicit content, aka not tasteful nudes, quote unquote, is 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 going to be banned starting in October. In October, on OnlyFans, there will be no more porn. The site that so many people get their porn directly from sex workers, a website that has made it possible for sex workers to survive the COVID-19 crisis, are no longer going to be able to do that. And you have to say, you have to ask why the fuck that is. And the answer is the payment processors. Visa, MasterCard, PayPal. Did you know that Patreon has rules against sexually explicit content? Even though there are tons and tons of fetish creators. There are so many. I, I know because I am a kinkster. I have been attached to kink communities. I'm pretty open about this, okay? Um... And I know artists who've had their, their Patreon site taken down. You want to know something that's not allowed? Yeah, hypnosis. Hypno. Hypno is not allowed on Patreon. Hypnosis is not banned, on, is banned on Patreon because Visa, MasterCard, etc. consider that to be illicit. As hard as this is to believe, I'm not very familiar with OnlyFans, but I thought it literally existed for porn. Genuinely asking, do people buy stuff on OnlyFans that isn't porn? Yes, they do. They buy celebrity pictures. One of the biggest, one of the biggest markets on OnlyFans that has increased over the last five to ten, like five years or so, or three years or so, has been celebrities having tasteful nudes, quote unquote, or just life pictures that they put behind a, a thing, a massive massive amount of celebrities have gone on OnlyFans to make a fuckload of money. But the celebrities are only a part of it. I mean, yes, it, that is an example of privilege and how rich people get have separate rules than everybody else. That is the example of gentrifying a platform. But it isn't even the celebrities' fault. It is the fault of MasterCard and Visa and PayPal and all of these other payment processors that say we won't we won't process your payments if you do something that we find morally repugnant and they find a lot of things morally repugnant as it turns out because yeah because a huge amount of their customer base a lot of people who are willing to put pressure on it are the most obscenely conservative people you can imagine religious fundamentalists christian dominionists people who believe it's wrong to be gay remember that the republican fucking party i've noticed that i'm kind of like sitting at a weird angle okay um that the republican party doesn't support like they don't support gay marriage the republican party that's the other party in america and yeah there are some republicans who don't mind gay marriage but that shows you where their mentality is. That shows your mentality that the platform of the of the of the party is fundamentally anti-gay. And that should tell you the broad level of things that are considered sexually illicit or elite or explicit or degenerate or whatever word that you want to use. And now we're seeing this. We saw Tumblr. This happened on Tumblr. We saw Twitter has started taking um, Twitter has started taking steps towards making it harder to access sex sex uh, sex related content. Um, Tumblr destroyed itself. And let me tell you something. You might not know this. You really might not know this. Oh, Patreon. Yep. Well, yeah, but that's because they they don't think about it. Tumblr was full of small, independent, queer sex workers who wrote and created art or took pictures of their unique thing that they liked. And all of that is gone. And much of it is gone forever. You have no 
fucking clue how much was lost. And if you're like me, where you consider porn or erotic art to be art, the death of Tumblr was the death of uh, was a massive mass death of art. So much stuff. I lost things that I liked that I never got to back up. Tumblr was the place to go for kink stuff. And now OnlyFans. You're going to lose that stuff. A lot of people, here's the thing. Even, let's let's pretend that every single content creator, every single sex worker currently working on OnlyFans is able to move off of OnlyFans. Even still, they're going, in that move, they're going to lose some of their art. Some of it will be lost forever. There are going to be people who are on vacation or who are like taking a break away and didn't hear the news and their stuff's going to be deleted and it will be gone. And there might not be backups on it. It might just be fucking gone. It's definitely art. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't know how you could make the argument that erotic that um, erotic art and that kink art isn't art. It fucking is. Even if you don't like the thing, it's still fucking art. And now people are going to have to move to sites with worse revenue sharing. There's and, and remember, though, the reason why this is happening is because of the payment processors. The exact same payment processors that are used for every single other site. It's coming for every single other site. This is the direction. We need to recognize this and we need to acknowledge that. Okay? Credit card process. PayPal is like this. You know that PayPal, um, like PayPal is super strict and will freeze your account and take your money if you're caught doing something that's against their TOS? There's another aspect of this, which I want to point out, okay? And it's going to, you're just going to have to ride with me real quick for just a second, okay? Just ride with me on this, on this little journey, okay? So, if you were a conservative and you believed that sex work was inherently exploitative and bad, that you believed that gay people were inherently uh, degenerate and exploitative and bad, okay? And you wanted to get that out of your society. But you can't really go out and just preach on the street corner that you want to purge the gay people. Because, obviously, that doesn't, that doesn't fly so well. That's not going to sell very well. Well, how could you, how could you come up with an interesting way to, to worsen the situation, to drive those people out of your society? What if you made it impossible for them to get money? What if you made it impossible for sex workers to safely get money? Well, a lot of people won't be able to be sex workers anymore. A lot of people will have to stop, be, will, will not be able to be gay anymore. This is the whole thing about like, for example, um, like the argument in which it's like, oh, just keep it in private starts to fall apart. Because if you have people who are pushing for a society where you should just keep it in private, well, all of a sudden, you start getting crowded out of existence. You stop being able to exist as a normal person in society. You get crowded out of society. You become marginalized. Sex workers, right now, there are going to... This is changing in October. There are, there are sex workers right now who are not going to have income anymore come October who might lose their entire jobs, who might lose their homes. I'm talking people who could be making tons of money right now, but won't be able to make the switch easily to another platform, won't be able to make the switch at all, perhaps. <sighs> but it has a, an additive effect. Because in addition to just harming those people, it forces those sex workers into seedier locations, into areas where they have less control. It pushes them into the hands, eventually, 
of criminals. Why? Let me ask you something. Does anybody know, like, does anybody know what a pimp is and, like, what a pimp does? Does anybody know what that is? Like, come on. Like, I know people talk about it and meme about a pimp. But do you know what a pimp does? Yeah. A pimp offers protection. Exploitative protection. But they offer protection to the women in their employ. Abusive protection. But they exist for a reason. They exist because sex work is illegal. And so you have to go into the black market. And the black market is dangerous because you can be arrested or killed. So people end up working with pimps because a pimp has a gun and will, pr and will protect you. And will, uh, will guard their turf. So the sex workers, in, out of a need to be safe and make money, end up running, having to go to pimps. This type of thing, shoving sex, even whatever the sex is, shoving the sex into the shadows makes it worse. It makes the situation worse. But guess who doesn't care? Religious fundamentalists. They don't care because their goal isn't to, isn't to make sex workers safe. Their goal isn't to take care of those people. Their goal is to advance a religious agenda. The right wing's goal is to re is to advance a conser a culturally conservative agenda that says these people should not exist in our society, and a, and the destruction of OnlyFans represents a massive example of this. Of tons of sex workers who are now going to find themselves in financial danger. Yeah, it's the drug war. But it's on sex, and we've had this happen in the past. We've already had this happen in the past. I did the Stonewall one. Do you remember? Do you remember the Stonewall episode that I did, the History Mama on Stonewall? Where I talked about how uh, what ended up happening is the mafia opened gay bars because they knew that they could pay off the police, and then gay people would have to go to the only existing gay bars, which were run by the mafia. And so the, the gay people would go to the mafia-run gay bars and get blackmailed because they had no other choice, and then also the, the bars would get raided all the time, and then you would get arrested because it increasingly became more marginalized, easier to become illegal. And some of those laws are still on the books to this day. Moral panic, moral, moral panic, Puritanism bullshit will be the motherfucking death of us. And all of it comes down to the fact that people are unwilling to actually analyze um, whether things cause harm, that they act on base reactionary disgust. They say, I don't like a thing and therefore it must be bad. And it must be purged out. And we don't have pushback. And do you want to know why? Because here's the thing. I mean, yes, but we'll get there, Lone Cat. Um, a lot of, as, as it turns out, a lot of people have kinks. A lot of people have fetishes. A lot of people have weird shit that they're into. But guess what? They're often willing to sort of look the other way out of convenience. Um, when it's not their kink that's getting closed closed down and you and so what happens is there's this slow crawl you know you remember the martin niemoller poem we know the martin niemoller poem i i feel like i don't i i feel like it's important to bring it in here even though i don't want people to take it the wrong way i'm not trying to compare this to the holocaust but first they come for the socialists first they come for the kinksters then they come for the trans people or the other way around, realistically, first they come for the trans people, then they come for the kinksters, then they come for the gay people, then they come for nudity as, in general. America has a problem. You know that the rest of the world doesn't have the same problem as with nudity as we do? You know that, right? Like, around the world, nudist topless beaches are all over the fucking place. In Germany, in, in all across Europe, there are fucking ads with tits all over the place. Because they don't have the same obsession with that that we do here in America, we fucking hate nudity. If you don't think that like this progression of like banning sex off of major platforms is going to result in increased puritanism across our society. Gayfesh says, I lived in Russia as a preteen and porn was literally sold in kiosks on bubblegum to me. Yeah, because for most people around the world, they're not deranged about sex. 
They're not as deranged about the idea that like in America, Americans are so afraid of titty that they will literally say that it's like rape if you have to see a titty. But it's not. Humans have fucking tits normally. Like, we just do. Like, what the fuck? The problem is that that uh, we have we have a problem in that um, no see the problem with cryptocurrencies is that they have the exact same problem. First of all, cryptocurrencies are incredibly difficult to use, and many, the vast majority of users simply will not figure out cryptocurrency. They just won't buy porn, or they'll go to like gray markets that are stealing the porn and reselling it for for cash. Crypto has a has a problem. Which is that, yes, you need, yes, exactly, Nightfall Gemini hit it. Crypto needs, event eventually has to be fungible, which means at the end of the day, you end up having to go through payment processors at the end of the day anyway. And guess what? A lot of the same exact corporations that are part of the, of the, uh, of the payment processor industry and the banking industry right now also have a lot of crypto. They control a fuckload of crypto. Like a lot. Crypto isn't the answer here. The answer here is is we have to challenge the culture that says that sex is bad, that says that we need to be afraid of kink, that we need to be afraid of deviancy. That's that is what we need to to challenge. Like deeply. And uh, it's really fucking depressing because I swear to fucking God, um, there is this like faction. There's this like faction of, of lefties who actually there's like two factions of lefties that are super like sex negative. There's like the tankies who are super traditionalist and they're perfectly fine with purging degeneracy out of their society. Even if they uh, like we saw with Luna Oi, for example. But there's also a group of lefties that I like to call the, um, the uwu tender queers. Okay? Let's call them that. The uwu tender queers. Okay? And this is a faction of people who more or less believe that, like, BDSM is inherently evil. Um, they think that everything that isn't perfectly vanilla, um, vanilla even for gay sex, is, is, is pedophilia. Um, yeah, the dirt. There's a bunch of dirtbag leftists too. There's a bunch of so-called dirtbag leftists who, as it turn out, um, they're perfectly fine with being a dirtbag if it means saying a racial slur, but they're not okay with being a dirtbag when it comes to having a deviant kink. You're going to see more of this, and we have to push back on it. We just absolutely have to push back on it. Okay, and I mean in every possible way that you can, like. There's not nothing is going to change at OnlyFans. They're not undoing this. And the fact that they're doing this, even though that it is probably going to be financially devastating for them, just goes to show you that they have been put in a position. No company would throw away money like this willingly. The only reason why they would do this, there's two reasons. One, the company has an ideological opposition to sex, which I don't think OnlyFans does. I don't think OnlyFans itself has an ideological opposition to sex. Or two, Something else is threatening them on a greater degree than cutting porn. They're cutting porn because the alternative is losing everything. And you have to ask it what is what who is making it so that they will lose everything? Who is it? And it is the answer is the payment processors. The fucking payment processors, the banks. Increasingly, there is a Um, increasingly, <laughs> oh my God, Constance, I know. Oh God, that is really funny. Okay. Listen, increasingly, uh, banks are being, banks and payment processors are being weaponized to impose a conservative cultural worldview on the, on the world. You understand that, right? Like that's what we're witnessing. And we need to recognize this. See, there's a thing. One of the things that really frustrates me about the left and and Democrats especially, but the left end of the political spectrum in general is that lefties are always stuck 
in in right now in very rigid ways of thinking. Not all lefties, but many. Okay. Um. Uh, they they get stuck in certain ways of understanding the world, and then other people who are smarter um, and more vicious and more strategic make political moves that are effective. Okay. Hannah Texas, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe a couple years from now. We'll see. No, I would never, I don't think I would ever buy a $3 million house. I know what I want for a house, and it's very simple. Um, I hope, I hope I don't need to ever buy a $3 million house. I don't need anything that fancy. But anyway, um, now I do think that there is a possibility that you get like a major, like a, a, some, some rich kinkster will make a, a independent payment processor. And that would be fucking pog. But we can't just rely on that. We need to think about how we can get this shit done. Okay? Um, and uh, the other thing that, um, that we need to think about is how do we effectively push back at this stuff? What are the ways that we, that we, that we actually analyze and target this? I don't think there is a path through the legislation through legislation to fix this problem um i don't think there's a way to pass a law that says pay paypal and visa and mastercard have to accept payments on these things we've gotten ourselves into a tough spot we've gotten ourselves into a tough spot which is that they're monopolies now these are untouchable giant corporations with no real way to be challenged outside of our own independent collective action now there may be technologies that allow for peer-to-peer -peer payments um that don't involve mainstream payment processors i think that would be fantastic but you want to know what another thing is fucking cash are you fucking cash you know, you know what's, you know what could is a foreseeable future, a future where if you want kink stuff, you have to get it physically, or digitally, but on a piece of physical media, via, via cash, or some other form of direct payment, or Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one too, but there's issues with Bitcoin that we already talked about. Oh, but yeah, boy, Shamoy, Adam and Eve is like a, a sanitized version. Those those ones, the sanitized, the clean stuff will last for a long time. I mean, not a long time, but they'll last for longer. Stuff like um, stuff like you know the the, the casual stuff, um, will will uh will exist for a while. Well, but here's the problem though, Dan Dan uh, Danny or er, er, Gosum, what do we do about the stuff we have right now? We need to start... People need to start backing up their fucking porn. You want to know how you fucking avoid this shit? You, 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 you gray market it, is what you do. Everybody should be backing this shit up. We should be... People who are interested in this stuff should start working to connect with and build actual relationships with sex workers, with porn artists that they like. Build working relationships. Have those copies because it's very fucking hard to suppress it, to suppress any type of art or any type of behavior if there's fucking millions of it out there. This is the, guys, this is the main idea behind pride. You, it is impossible to suppress gay people if gay people refuse to be suppressed. If they're always out there and, and all of the people in the world, the, the gay people who are being oppressed in silence, who are in the closet, they see the gay people out on the street and they go, wait a minute, there are other people like me? I'm not a freak? Go back to a 90s style desktop porn folder. Unironically... Go back to a 90s style desktop porn folder and back it up like eight times across different pieces of media. It takes you like 10 seconds with modern tools. You can back up your porn collection like that. And and I've, I've joked about this in the future, but if we get to a future where it becomes increasingly hard to get certain types of porn, to get access to certain types of... Um, of, of sex work or to get access or, or for sex workers to work safely, people who have this shit backed up who have working relationships with sex workers you're going to be a fucking king
Do you know how much people pay for sex? Do you know how much furries pay for furry stuff? The thing is, we have to be pragmatic. I hate that fucking word, but we have to be practical. We have to come up with actual ideas, ways of circumventing these fucking systems. Because if we don't, we're going to be, once again, blindsided. You joke, but porn warlords is like a real thing. You know that, like, in the past, like... People who own, who ran the sex who ran sex trades were like literal fucking warlords, right? They were pimps. That's what I was talking about. You would become powerful. Now that's a horrible structure. I don't want that to be what we go to. I want us to avoid that. But if we want to avoid that system, which is where they're forcing people, remember I talked about this before. The closure of OnlyFans is going to force a lot of sex workers into more desperate straits. A lot. I would like to avoid a future where pimps come back into into fashion. I would like to avoid a future where um where skeezy back room sales areas where you sell the the gay porn so that the the people out out front don't know that you have illicit material hidden in your store. Um, I don't want to go to that type of fewer future, but that is the sort of stuff we're going towards. I've talked about this again and again and again on my channel. The stigmatization, the canceling, the, 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 the fucking calling every trans person a fucking pedophile, regardless of any truth whatsoever. Calling all, calling fucking gay kinksters pedophiles because they said, no, I'm not going to go fucking hide in the closet for your comfort, for your like passive, for your comfort to not know that I exist. Yeah, but socialist cat girl, that's like, that's like a fluke. Those items are like, those fucking items that you're talking about are like, those are like outliers. And, and they don't make sense. There's, of course, there's stuff that's going to get around. Also, another thing, just so you all know, um, like, I know some of you know this, but like, historically, kink has been hidden in all kinds of things. Let me tell you another story real quick. Let me tell you an, a quick story. Did you know that there's like 17, 17 to 25 states in the United States in which vi the sale of vibrators is still illegal? Did you know that? In America. Like, that's, that's real. That's an actual thing. There's multiple states in which the sale of sex toys is illegal. Still. Now. And in those states, you want to know where you can get a sex toy? The pharmacy. You can get a personal massager at the pharmacy. No joke. But, but, oh, but the selection is very limited. It sucks. But that's all you can get. That's, that's the state of America. If you don't think we are not distanced from the past in which sex toys designed for women were literally illegal. Yeah, exactly, Gayfesh. Gayfesh says, my grandparents owned a pharmacy. Once my grandma ordered a big thing of back massagers and I didn't realize until they arrived that they were vibrators. Yup. Yeah, catalogs of clothes usually cater to women, including face massagers, which were actually hidden at hidden vibrators. Yep. But isn't that a terrible way to exist? Isn't it a terrible world to exist in where the only thing you get is products that... Okay, guys, let me tell you an example. Like, the Hitachi. Everybody keeps talking about the Hitachi, okay? Guys, the Hitachi has a lot of problems, okay? I fucking love my Hitachi. Don't get me wrong. The Hitachi is a miracle device in, in many ways, but it is not designed for sex. Because, because they, because it was not, it, it, they, they can't just embrace it and say it's designed for sex. It's got like, it's got like a really rough fucking texture that fucking hurts you. That shit sucks. Now there are other ones that have been designed since then, but that's because there's been a slight laxing of peep of this sort of like puritanism, which is coming back now. Oh, both are great sugar glass. Stare Arena says, yep, Alabama. 
Uh, we have- we have marital aids. I worked at a toy shop down the street, and that summer, police raided us three times. Holy fuck. Wait, how would I know? Come on. Come on. For real? No, I don't have SR- oh my god. I don't have SRS. I fuck people with pussies sometimes! Sober Floaty with the ten dollars. Thank you very much. Yo, that's fucking awesome, Sober Floaty. That's fantastic. It's all good, Sugar Glass. I'm just goofing on you. Yeah, that's true, Socialist Maker. There's a lot of issues with it. Okay, listen. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues with these things. Shoving sex into the margins is unequivocally bad. It's bad for sexual health. It's it's incredibly bad for preventing sex trafficking. It's incredibly bad for preventing child abuse. When sex exists only in the margins, so much shit gets away. And so much harm gets away. And it makes me really fucking mad because uh, I scream about this all the time. I fucking scream about it all the goddamn time. And I don't know that it does anything. But, you know, I wanted to read an article. I wanted to read an article by, uh, by somebody who I respect a lot. How many of you remember me telling the story about Anna Valens, a, a trans sex writer who got turbo canceled over a... A mild think piece about a f playing Fall Guys with a butt plug in. A lot of you remember this. I've talked about it a million times. Well, guess what? A couple of months ago, guess who wrote about just this? It was, it was, it was Anna Valens. Anna Valens has been writing about this for fucking ever. Okay? For fucking ever. Look at this. Nathan Grayson. Uh... Former Kotaku writer, current video game reporter for the Washington Post. I saw that OnlyFans is banning sexually explicit content and immediately thought of something very smart but also very grim that a that Anna Valens, AC Valens, told me earlier this year. It's a situation where we've seen a gradual buildup of companies like Apple and Google being able to police content that's within their app stores that other companies are putting out on their apps. But there's also a situation where we have payment processors like PayPal and CC Bill continuing to stress what should or should not be allowed on the internet. Anna Valens, a former writer for Daily Dot and the current writer for We Got This Covered, managing editor, or sorry, current Ed managing editor for We Got This Covered, who specializes in queer communities and adult content creation, told Kotaku. That all leads up to banks and credit cards that get to dictate what free expression is on the internet. This was from an interview that Nathan Grayson had with, Ace, with, with the Anna Valens some time ago. Anna Valens, who was turbo canceled by lefties, by lefties, mind you, by fuckers over at Chapo Trap House. For a, a random article she did about fucking playing Fall Guys with a butt plug-in. Yes, by lefties. That was by lefties. That was, yes, she was canceled by lefties. Don't worry about it, Sugar Glass. And Anna Valens wrote another article that I wanted to read, which is about Ichio. Itch.io is not the not safe for work LGBTQ safe haven that you thought it was, that you think it is. There is a weak link. Okay, so listen up. Listen up. Valve Steam is back in the news again after banning yet another adult video game. Itch.io, one of its smaller off-praise competitors, is in the same boat. Despite claims to the contrary, the two marketplaces have more in common than they do not. I know this as a as a queer adult content creator. Instead of championing one company despite the other, the games industry must take a collective step back and look at the facts. 
Itch.io is just a temporary accommodation that LGBTQ creators and adult developers may need to leave out, leave out of necessity in the near future. Here's the context. Earlier this month, adult VR studio Holodex revealed Steam banned three of its submissions, seemingly over the company's use of photogrammatically digitized sex workers. Holodex's games remain currently available on Itch.io. Hold on a second. I have to check and make sure there's no actual not safe for work art in this. Hold on. Let me just make sure. I don't want to fucking. I don't want to literally become a lesson as we as we as I do this. Where's my fucking thing here? Let's just make sure real quick. Okay, 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 okay. We're in the clear. We're in the clear. We're in the clear. We're in the clear. We're all in the clear. Okay, we're all in the clear. It's all good. Lamau. <clears throat> here we go. Itchio, meanwhile, was brought up in the ongoing Epic versus Apple lawsuit. Epic Games now offers access to Itchio's storefront through its Epic Games launcher. During the case, Apple's lawyer, lawyer criticized Itchio for its so-called adult games, bemoaning perverteers sisterly lust for advertising fetishes that are not appropriate for us to speak about in federal courts. Guys, come on. The... I didn't think we were going to have a talk about about this but come on that's like a st it's like a stereotype there are many games on itch.io i won't even read the names out loud but they are both offensive and sexualized apple's lawyer stated according to kotaku apple's fucking lawyer is calling these games offensive that is remember how i said doesn't matter the word degenerate explicit etc no harm being done no harm but they're too you can't even they wouldn't even talk about it apple's rough treatment towards itch.io was later criticized by game developers and even lampooned by itch.io's twitter account games industry members like double fines community and content manager heather alexandra stressed that itch.io is not some depraved play depraved place but one for inclusion and artistic integrity the games found here do tremendous work in furthering the medium and 95 percent of the reason it's even being targeted is because it is a sex positive lgbtqia friendly storefront alexandra warned hmm it's true that Itch.io is one of the last major open marketplaces left to marginalized game developers. Censorship is very rare on Itch.io. While Steam regularly pulls adult games and has a tepid relationship with the LGBT community, Itch.io is far more friendly to its queer and not safe for work creators. But don't mythologize the website. Itch.io is not a DIY art spice art space run out of a queer art group's Brooklyn basement, nor it is a collectively owned, nor it is, is, wow, God, nor is it a collectively owned marketplace where users can post and sell as they please. Itch.io is owned by Itch, Itch Corporation, and according to PC World, was inspired by another company that owned an open man, open, an open marketplace, Bandcamp. Itch.io Corp., like every other privately held company, exists to make money and assure its longevity. That's it. Games media generally depicts Itch.io creator Leif Corcoran as an independent developer-first marketplace curator that sharp contrasts sharply with Steam's cold rules and nonsensical regulations. The Verge wrote flattering of the small-staffed Itch Corp. In, in 2018, describing Corcoran as someone who actually gives a shit, perhaps to the point of burnout. I haven't really taken a proper vacation in a long time. I believe Corcoran has player and creator's best interests at heart, but David Karp clearly had Tumblr users' best interests in mind when he told the journalist Lux Alpatrum about his vision for what Tumblr could do for porn and what porn could do for Tumblr in return. Karp, like Corcoran, set out to do something different and gave queer pornographers a safe place to call home for years. The Demon Mama game. Wait, this game? I'm pretty sure this game... Wait, I don't remember who made this game. But yeah, that's the Demon Mama game. Um, but we all know how this story ended. Eventually, Tumblr was sold to Yahoo, which became a part of Verizon. By 2018, Tumblr abruptly banned all adult content from its platform and began one of the highest profile user exoduses and falls from grace in online history. If Tumblr's legacy showed us anything, it's to not grow too attached to your online home. When you're forced to work and create in a world where major corporations control your internet experience, one man's best intentions do not make a platform's in, in a platform invincible from capitalism's creeping hands. There's an essay by game developer Badru in which he lays out the case against Itch.io's moral validation in the games world, declaring Itch.io just a Silicon Valley startup with a rainbow pin. He warns the game industry's obsession with Itch.io is rooted in an aesthetically anti-capitalist posture that masquerades financial privilege.
In other words, it's easy to hype up working exclusively with Itch.io if you can afford to only work with Itch.io. But for queers who rely on their games to pay the bills, it's not Itch.io that keeps the rent paid. It's Steam. Badrew ends his essay warning there are no commons anymore. This is not just true of Itch.io, but the infrastructure that makes the marketplace possible in the first place. For queer adult content creators, this is Itch.io's weakest link. The storefront relies on PayPal, Stripe, and Payoneer to make its revenue payouts. PayPal is notoriously antagonistic towards adult content and sex workers, while Stripe has its own anti-porn clauses in its restricted businesses section, and previous delayed payouts to a hentai Kickstarter. Payment processors, banks, and credit card companies all control the purse strings for online access to adult content. As erotic hypnosis creators told The Daily Dot last year, we've seen this story play out before on other platforms hailed for their wide assortment of pornography. Praise Itch.io as we may, the platform is only as friendly to queer smut peddlers as its payment processors allow us to keep using it. Because Itch.io is a company seeking longevity, don't expect Itch.io to go down with the pornographers. It seemingly holds dear, no matter how many funny tweets its Twitter account makes. I do not criticize Itch.io lightly. As a queer, not safe for work developer, I've had quite a bit of success hosting 18 plus games on the on the site. I have two kinky adult video games exclusively available on Itch.io, Blood Pact and She Hungered, which have made a couple thousand dollars combined. I have a third game on the way, which I plan to host on Itch.io as well. I enjoy using the platform and find it successfully connects me with my core demographic. For now, it's a good home, and I encourage uh, encourage other people to use Itch.io too. But pack your bags, have a backup plan in place, and avoid falling in love with the site and its indie aesthetic. When you're a marginalized artist, an exodus is always on the horizon. And Itch.io will never be an exception to the rule. This was written back in May, by the way. May 13th, 2021. Before, before the OnlyFans stuff was even on the horizon. Well, I mean, it was on the horizon... For a lot of us, but I mean actual, like, there was no, I, there was no indication that they were going to do it anytime soon. And it's very funny how queer games get blocked all the time from Steam and other websites. But not those, not those cishet games. The trans ones, the gay ones, all the time. And many other kinks that are harmless, remind, re remember, harmless kinks. No, Uncle Gumbald, of course they knew what their site was being used for. What I'm trying to tell you is that this is indicative. The fact that OnlyFans is purging porn is indicative of the direction that payment processors are going, which means they're going to do it to other sites too. OnlyFans is just the most well-known one. Soon it'll be others. So we need to have fucking backups. Water Daughter asks, could you please uh, recap or run down the thing that happened with Anna Valens again? Yes. Anna Valens wrote an article about um, a, a think piece, a sex, a sex think piece about wearing a butt plug while playing Fall Guys. And the article was basically about, okay, Fall Guys, do, for those of you who don't know, the game Fall Guys is a very, like, kitty. Um, you know, goofy, goofball, uh, fluffy dudes bumping into each other and whatever. Um, and, um, yeah, Fur Affinity isn't safe at all. By the way, Fur Affinity bans a whole bunch of content that isn't harmful. But, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, so Fall Guys, um, is a game, but it has no in-game text chat. It has no in-game voice chat whatsoever. There is no way to interact with the characters, with the play with, with other players, outside of bumping into each other with your Fall Guys. That's the only way. And there's little emotes you can do that, like, wave your hand and stuff. But that's it. So, what Anna Valens posited was, um, what, 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 what was a think piece about what it would mean if you get sexual pleasure from, uh, playing Fall Guys with a butt plug in when you bump into other players is there any sort of issue with consent there now it actually is an interesting think piece it's super interesting if you it, it's silly on its head wait wait hold on it's it's silly on its head but what an interesting thing right the entire game is about non-consensually bumping people all over or or consent i mean pseudo consent you jump into a game and nobody wants to get bumped off the track but it's part of the mechanics of the game that you bump into other players and throw them around and you fight with each other 
And since there's no connection besides the game itself, the only, there's no voice, there's no text, it's just the game, what harm could there be if somebody had a butt plug-in? Is there any violation of consent in that situation? And the conclusion was, of course, no, there's not, but it's good to think about these things. It's, a, it's, it's, it's good to think about them because it, 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 it helps us establish that the standard is, you know, enthusiastic consent. Obviously, in this particular case, there's no harm. That article resulted in a turbo cancellation. I mean a fucking turbo cancellation in which um, in which Anna Valens, who, by the way, never actually did the thing in the in the in the in the in the, uh, in the think piece. Anna Valens did do the experiment, but not with a butt plug in her butt. She did it with a butt plug attached to her side. That was the, there was a video of her playing the game and the butt the butt plug was attached to, your, to her side. And yes, the butt plug vibrates when people bump into you. That's the idea. And I'm not kidding you. People, no joke. Uh, I saw a Chapo guy. One of the Chapo uh, for you, uh, what are they called? The the Chapo for you or whatever. The Chapo Twitch guy. I think it was like, I think his name is like Tom or something. Chapo Tom. Um, literally literally respond, replied to that by saying that you belong in prison. And that and her post, her article got blown the fuck up. Her, she left Twitter for days. She was being called on my timeline. This was uh, last year. Um, in my timeline, there was people calling her a pedophile, people calling her a sexual harasser, people calling her a sex pest. And and you know what's really funny? She got really fucking mad, and she posted an art a a video that was literally the same thing, but it was a cis woman doing it, and nobody had given a shit. It, in fact, it was 10 times more, the, the, the video that she posted was more, had more views and more interactions than her article did. And then she posted a link to Heel Sluts, which is a giant subreddit in which people do this all the time. They put in a butt plug that is, that is uh, it's specifically for Final Fantasy and Overwatch. Um, they put in a butt plug that is tied to your healing performance in a raid or your healing performance in a game of Overwatch. The butt plug vibrates more, the more, the better you are at healing. AKA heal sluts. And that has so many subs. That that subreddit has so many people engaging on it. Nothing. But the second a trans woman writes an article that talks about consent like that, you get canceled as a pedophile. It's literally called Heel Sluts. You could find it very easily. Yeah, exactly. Sounds awful, right? You want to make sure you avoid it. Yeah. Hey. There's probably better ones out there, okay? Listen, the field of teledildonics has a lot way to go, a long way to go, okay? Oh yeah, yeah, Constance is bringing up uh Constance brings up here uh it, both both myself and Doe have been can have been called pedophiles for random takes that we had on YouTube that don't even resemble that. Remember, my take on kink at pride literally got me called a pedophile for days because I said that I don't think kinksters who aren't doing any harm, who aren't hurting anyone, shouldn't be forced back into the closet. Doe was called a fucking pedophile by RGR for the same exact thing. Fucking so stupid. So, and, and just so you know, Remember how, remember, wait a second, we're not quite done yet, because RGR is, a fu is fucking stupid, and getting Twitter canceled is one thing, but what happens when other people start to get involved? Do you know how many people, do you know how many, you know what happens when you get a target painted on your back? You know, like, uh, like people like, um, like, uh, like Shoe on Head and Lauren Southern? Lauren Southern made a joke about 
the kink at pride people should be killed because they were pedophiles. Lauren Southern made a joke about that. Lauren Southern made a joke where she had her gun and she like loaded her gun and was saying that kink at pride people needed to be killed because they're uh, pedophiles. Weird, huh? Weird, huh? Weird how that works. It's like one or two steps removed from just saying we should kill trans people. If, if, you, if, if every trans person on the internet gets labeled as a pedophile no matter what they do, with no no proof of harm, with no proof of anything, you just get it just happens if you ever talk about sex or, or or anything. Then you have a bunch of people like Lauren Southern who go around there stochastically encouraging people to kill pedophiles, to go pedo hunting. And of course, remember, there are literal discords of pedo hunters. And it's really funny because those fucking pedo hunter people um often just end up targeting uh like consensual adult kinksters like adult baby people or whatever yeah merrick merrick brings up a good point remember when i was called a sexual assaulter by thousands of people for one girl hearing me kiss somebody else i wonder if all that would have happened if i wasn't a sex worker nah 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 i wouldn't have i know it wouldn't have you know you have solidarity from me merrick you fucking know that that shit is fucking bullshit yeah so again there's this thing and i've talked about this many times in the past um i've i've been i've been talking about i've i've talked about in the past moral panics this is definitionally a moral panic the united states is seized in a countrywide moral panic about degeneracy and we're seeing its effect all over the place and I want you to, I want to encourage all of my viewers, learn your queer history. I know a lot of my audience is queer, but those of you who aren't queer, learn queer history. Because guess what? It's not a big step. It is not a big step to go from, uh, from queer people are bad to kinksters and BDSM people who are cishet are, are, are queer and are bad. 